she and Ryan Walters are simpatico in that way. Every time a camera comes out, Ryan Walters instantly teleports himself in front of it and he'll come out of the bushes and he'll be like, is that a camera? Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Liberal Loudmouth. So today's video is about religious freedom and some of the crazy things that are going on in the state of Oklahoma and the performative acts that some people do to gain attention and notoriety for themselves within the Republican Party, or should I say the fundamentalist Christian Party. So before we get started, I'm going to tell you exactly what started all of this by showing you an article that came from News Channel 8 right here. Before the handshakes and diplomas at East Central's graduation ceremony last month, school board member Elena Ashley invited everyone to pray with her. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that each one of you would walk forward from this moment in the excellence and love of God, that he would guide you, direct you, and draw you to your ultimate goal in the name of Jesus. It lasted just 18 seconds, but it set off a month of controversy with Ashley saying she received an email from school board president Woolley stating, Dr. Gist and I have received numerous complaints from members of our school community about you adding a religious prayer to the commencement statement. The prayer you made is not allowed under the U.S. Constitution and rulings by the U.S. Supreme Court. It was just a statement of well-wishing and love. And if they decide to sue her, I think she's got an excellent case. Attorney Ken Malloy of the Oklahoma Center for Constitutional Analysis says 10 years ago what Ashley did would have been a problem, but with the makeup of the Supreme Court now... Yes, Elena was a public official. Yes, it was a public event. Historically, that had been problematic. But with the new way that the court is swinging in favor of telling organizations, we got to draw that line more in favor of free exercise clause and not so much in favor of the establishment clause. I think she's got an excellent case. I think it's a terrible thing to um, step all over our religious freedom of speech liberties. Ashley says she's been told that in the future, unless she sticks to the scripts at commencements, she'll no longer be allowed to deliver them. She says if that happens, she sues. Burt Mumolo, News Channel 8. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I could feel the Lord taking hold said no student ever let's be honest what she did was performative she knew that it would piss people off she knew that it would get the ire of the community and she did it anyway why because she likes being in front of the camera she likes the attention she likes to generate attention she and ryan walters are simpatico in that way every time a camera comes out ryan walters instantly teleports himself in front of it and he'll come out of the bushes and he'll be like is that a camera and then he'll say something ridiculous like teachers are terrorists or you're the woke mob and Nathan Dom, he is ultra-religious. This guy, when he took over the Republican Party, he's now the chair of the Oklahoma Republican Party. When he took that over, it was Bible verse after Bible verse after Bible verse. The power of Christ compels you. So Nathan Dom came out and he said some things that just weren't true. All right, let's go ahead and get into that video right now. Coming out, uh, it's a great day when we can all exercise our freedom of speech protected under the First Amendment. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the Constitution and about the First Amendment. Uh, there's a lot of people that mistakenly believe that the Constitution says separation of church and state. In fact, you will not find that phrase anywhere in the Constitution or the founding documents. And in fact, that letter was a a private letter that Thomas Jefferson was writing to a church to in 
encourage them to say that, that the government would not get involved in the affairs of the church, but the church could continue to stay involved in the affairs of government. So there's a lot of people that unfortunately do not understand history. They do not understand our Constitution. And we're seeing that now with some of these uh, school districts and members of the school district that do not understand what our Constitution says. So he claims that Thomas Jefferson sent a letter telling this church organization, well, uh, government can't get in the, involved in religion, but religion can get involved in government. And nowhere does it say separation of church and state. Well, Mr. Dom, I've actually got the receipts here, so we're going to take a look at it right now. Let me put it up on the screen. That is the actual letter from the Danbury uh, Baptist Associates to Thomas Jefferson. Now, I want to be clear that they reached out to Thomas Jefferson in January of 1802 to express their support and congratulation because he just became the president of the United States. And the Baptists of Danbury, Connecticut, they were a religious minority at the time, and they were concerned about issues related to religious freedom. So they wanted some clarification about what that meant for them to ensure that they would be able to practice their religion. And in response to that, I'm just going to go ahead and read the whole thing to you, uh, that what Thomas Jefferson said to the Danbury Baptist Association folks. Okay, now this letter says, gentlemen, the affectionate sentiments of esteem and approbation which you are so good to express towards me on behalf of the Danbury Baptist Association gives me the high satisfaction. My duties dictate a faithful and zealous pursuit of of the interest of my constituents and in proportion as they are persuaded of my fidelity to those duties. The discharge of them becomes more and more pleasing. Believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions. I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declared that their legislature should, quote, make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, end quote, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. Adhering to this expression of the supreme will of the nation on behalf of the rights of conscience, I shall see with sincere satisfaction the progress of those sentiments which tend to restore to man all his natural rights, convinced he has no natural right in opposition to his social duties. I reciprocate your kind prayers for the protection and blessing of the common father and creator of man and tender you for yourselves and your religious association assurances of my high respect and esteem. Nowhere in this letter that he wrote to them did he say, but religion can get inside of the government. That's not what he says. And in fact, he very explicitly states that there is a wall of separation between the church and the state. How you can read that in any other way than religion and government don't mix. They're like oil and water. We don't want the religion in the government. We don't want the government in the religion. Bing, bang, boom. It's done. The Danbury Baptist Association was worried about having their Baptists be messed with by the city government of Connecticut. Because back then, Protestants really mattered. One Protestant group was shunned by other Protestant groups. It wasn't as open-ended as it is now. So they were concerned that other religious organizations would take over the government in Connecticut, in Derenberry, Connecticut, and then push them out. And Thomas Jefferson said, no, they can't do that. So as you can see, it is very clear that Thomas Jefferson knew that they didn't want religion and government they didn't want the government in religion. And in fact, the Danbury Associates themselves didn't want religion in government. That's what they were afraid of. Nathan Dom doesn't want you to know this. He wants to just spew these religious platitudes and be done with it. But I've got to say, Nathan Dom, history is not on your side. And that is why people like Ryan Walters and Nathan Dom push for legislation and policy that will allow them to skew history in their own image. And we know 
what that image is. We just got out of that after the Civil Rights Act. Let's not go back to it, okay? All right, everybody, that's it for me today. Uh, this is the Liberal Loudmouth. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Let's get that algorithm going. Make a comment in the comment section and hit the bell icon so that you can get notified when I do more videos. And we'll catch you next time. Peace.